Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> when I presented the bill and I asked the Honorable Minister of Tourism to lead the discussion with Mr. Speaker, I never intended that discussion to be a treatise on tourism management or tourism history, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> it's incumbent on me that I, for the sake of history, for the sake of ensuring that the records of this honorable house and the young people, Mr. Speaker, let me just divert a little bit to tell you why the young people in St. Lucia need to know the history. Just give me two seconds, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you have a nice collage of pictures out there. And, Mr. Speaker, I, I think they should not be there. I think they should be framed and, treat, and put in a proper place. Because that's the mission of Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, there are some bright young people who I get up a quiz and they do. <laughs> if they had to go for an exam, you see how all them pass the exam and they have a mark, they'll fail. It just shows you, Mr. Speaker, how the history of St. Lucia, the young people in St. Lucia, they get their history from sources that do not give them the facts. So this is why it's very important when the leader of the opposition stands up and speaks the words that, that, that he speaks. I must clarify, Mr. Speaker. I have to. I feel duty bound, Mr. Speaker. So very quickly, Mr. Speaker, I will mention the idea that he says the Labour Party was against tourism. I remember in 1998, the member for Viewfort South was the Minister of Finance. And in a budget address, he said the economy is in transition. It was transitioning from an agricultural based economy to a service industry led by tourism and international financial services. Mr. Speaker, the opposition castigated him. Castigated him. You understand? He, I mean, they thought he was saying, they said he had abundant idiotre fig, the 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 coupe, all kinds of things, Mr. Speaker. You know, that's the history when he said the economy, economy was in transition. But he stands, sits and says, and he says the Labour Party never understood tourism or condemned tourism. He says that we brought racism into come into into St. Lucia and St. Lucia Poets and Tourism. Who was the first politician who went on public media and accused people in his honorable house, specifically the member for Viewfort South, about being a massa? Who, was, who did it? Who did that? Who accused him of being a slave owner? And only recently, one of his senators one of his senators did the same thing. One of his senators, and as usual, he did not condemn it. But he speaks about, we brought racism, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, any time you use some words in St. Lucia, they crowd it. You hear about black Americans. You hear about Afrocentric Americans. But if you say black St. Lucians, you bring racism. I, 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 where are we heading to? Where are we heading to this country? So we are the ones who brought receiving into in the politics. Who started this? Who started it, Mr. Speaker? Who started? Who started saying whose lineage is in slavery? Who is master? Who started? Mr. Speaker, then he goes and he says about, we don't understand the benefits of tourism. In 1997, which government removed taxes on tips and service charge to benefit the workers of the tourism industry? Which government? We removed taxes. So hotel workers got their taxes, got their tips and service charge free of taxes. Which government <coughs> moved with the labor code to stop the, the shift, the, the, the double shift system in the hotels. 
Which government, Mr. Speaker, which government spoke about or implemented the tourism stimulus bill after 9-11 to almost double the incentives for hotel investments in the country? Which government? And, Mr. Speaker, then the village tourism. The member, the leader of the government comes and speaks about what, 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 what do you call it? Village tourism? Village tourism was a completely new idea that came from the genius of, 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 of the leader of the opposition. And he thought that um, village tourism would have benefited St. Lucia Miss long before. Under the member for Viva South, there was something called the Nature Heritage Tourism Program, where we sought to improve local hotel sites, waterfalls, etc. Who started the Ansari Fish Fry? Who started the Mrs. So, I mean, this, this is historical murder that's taking place in this honorable house mr speaker who did it who who built the road to win jama on a nature heritage tourism program who decided that we should we would have insurances for waterfalls and rivers and we, and then the flower place in miku we developed it as a tourism place to bring tourists to the hinterland of the country. Which government? Maniko Gardens, thank you. Which government? We help them in the insurance and of keeping the, 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 the area so tourists can come. Which government decided that Point Seraphine, that there was a gate at Point Seraphine that was closed? And we said, listen to me, that tourists had to come, had to go right, right around and did not come to the arcade. Who opened that gate for tourists to come through? Before 9-11, before I just closed after 9-11. Who did that? Which government? Which government built Z at, month, at, at the Mon, next to government house? Which government built the, the lookout in that area? Which government built a lookout in Denry? Which government? Yes, in Madeli. Which government? And you talk about we don't know about tourism, and we never supported tourism. Which government, Mr. Speaker? Which government? Mr. Speaker, the member for Miku South <coughs> speaks about hotel development and trying to be sarcastic. He said, oh, I'm glad you all come together with me. When he came into government, he found range developers building a hotel we came here and we begged him not to change the model. He changed the model. Range developers left the country and he had to pay them millions of dollars. And they went to Dominica and they built Dominica's first six-star hotel. Which government? Mr. Speaker, which government decided that jazz would have to have to have the economic effects in the country, have to create it. And we had the jazz and arts festival. We added an arts component to the jazz festival, Mr. Speaker. Which government? Who condemned it? Which government decided that Darren Sami was somebody that had to be used to promote St. Lucia? Which government decided to give him his first set of cricket gear and his first and his trips to play? Cricket in England. Which government? So, Mr. Speaker, so the, the, the leader of the opposition comes to his honorable house, and this time his advisor said, asked him to change the style. He said, I am happy that you all embrace I am happy that you all embrace it. We don't need this happiness. Because we always understood the benefit of tourism. He was the one who started the idea of transition from, from agriculture to tourism. I was Minister of International Financial Services. We started the offshore industry in the country. The same way we started a CIP. We, we alone started it. And how did we start it? We started it with 
a group that the member for view for itself was ensured that members of the opposition were in that group that began um, exploring the benefits of CIP for St. Lucia. Which government? When he came, he changed the model. Which government, Mr. Speaker? So, you know, Mr. Speaker, it's very, very important. It's very important that I make these points for the young people of St. Lucia to understand the history. Because, Mr. Speaker, this population, more than half of it are people below the age of 35 years old. And these people listen to that kind of thing. And believe it. They listen to that misinformation. Especially when it's done in, in, in a nice, you know, when it's packaged properly in social media. And they believe it, Mrs. Speaker. So I have to clear, I have to clear the, clear the air. Not for my benefit and my way out. For the benefit of the young people of St. Lucia. For the benefit of the future in St. Lucia. I'm sure the member from Miku North, if I bring him out, they're here to send fellas on the table there. I'm sure he doesn't know some of the people outside there. The member, the member for, for Mikunov, and, he, and he's a member of parliament. Because, Mr. Speaker, the history of this country has not been written in a way where we can celebrate our heroes and know the truth. So we listen to the truth on talk shows. We listen to our history on talk shows. We listen to our history on things we write two minutes on TikTok. Nothing wrong in, nothing wrong in that. But that's where, we, that's where we learn our history. So we have to find a way. <clears throat> and this honorable house should be a way, should be a place where the young people of St. Lucia should know the history of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. How many young people know about the liberalization of the telephone industry in St. Lucia, led by the member for, for Viewford South and Calix George? How many people know that, Mr. Speaker? How many people know about going to secondary school? 60 or 50 people out of 2,000 could only go to secondary school in St. Lucia. Some people didn't even know that you needed a tax clearance to travel to leave St. Lucia. So when they made a big fuss about Pierre, when they tell people they can't travel, because they, they, owe, they owe tax to people, right down that building, there was a little hut, a little cubicle where you had to go for tax clearance. You had to pay $5 for it. That's why you should who removed it? The member for the member for Viva South. He's the one who removed it. So when you hear it, he comes and he gives this convoluted view of history and appears as if he's a guru and he did tourism. The guy was minister of tourism for five years. And prime minister for five years. Five years, but he pretends that he's done nothing about it. And he's happy that we have embraced tourism. Thank you for your happiness. We don't want to embrace neither. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to support this. Finally, Mr. Speaker, who started the Rangers and the Hostess, and the hostess program? It's a Lucia. They dismantled it when they came there. We had employed Rangers and Hostesses. They dismantled it. And now we're going to bring it back. We, they dismantled the Nature Heritage Tourism Program. They stopped it. And now they came, they come back for village tourism. Pretend that it was the first time that's come in this country. So, Mr. Speaker, I thought I would do that because of the way in which these people fashion St. Lucia and try to place the Labour Party in a position where we would never walk. Mr. Mr. Speaker, what the Labour Party stands for is St. Lucia first. We're not against foreign indirect investment. The most lucrative sleuth, the most lucrative set of foreign investment legislation was passed by the St. Lucia Labour Party. The most lucrative. We're the ones, like, we have a, we're talking about taxation. The next Motion is going, to be a is going to be about going to be about taxation, Mr. Speaker, and you will see the history of taxation in St. Lucia. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to support this this, this motion on the, on the Tourism Development Fund, and I thought it necessary that we give we go back a little in time. And I know the member Shozel, he knows that too. <coughs> he knows about that too. 
He knows about some of the misinformation that comes from his side. But one thing of him, he, he does not repeat it. He doesn't, he doesn't re repeat it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, history, history, history. Let me make it history, Mr. Speaker, because you know, this, these days we drop in documents to the house. <clears throat> Talk about investment and who stopped investment. The range investment, Mr. Speaker, that came into St. Lucia started with us. And then he speaks about CIP and hotels. The range investment, Mr. Speaker, the range investment. We begged him. We begged the member for Miku South to not to interfere in how the range development was progressing. We begged him. I sat here, and I, although they said that we have lost our right to speak, <coughs> I sat here and I begged him. I remember the member from, from Viewport South begging him to not interfere with that, let it go. But he is speaking about. Because we started it, he stopped it. There are a number of things that we started that we stopped, Mr. Speaker. And one day I was talking to a friend of mine, and I said to them, in 2016, when we lost the election, Mr. Speaker, let me tell you the projects that were on the table. Rosalie Highway, St. Jude Hospital, PPP fund for, for the airport, Millennium Highway, Life Health Center, and the OKU hospital was complete. If they had just sat down, just sat, and allowed these projects to continue, we would not be in government. But they changed, they talking about changing things. They changed everything, including the Range Hotel. And you don't know what it costs us to change the, the further, 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 Here's what it cost us. Requests for advance, settlement agreement, government of St. Lucia and range developers. The Department of Finance requests that the Minister of Finance <coughs> grants approval of an advance to the Department of Finance to finance obligations for a settlement agreement arising out of a, a dispute <coughs> in relation to the development agreement for the development of a hotel resort in St. Lucia, range development St. Lucia, in the amount of five million two hundred thousand United States dollars. Talking about wasting money, and who wastes the government treasury, and who doesn't know how to handle money. <coughs> the approach. <coughs> On May 41st, 2016, and you know, Mr. Speaker, they have always threatened me. Bring the evidence, bring the evidence. But you know, Mr. Speaker, I have a country to run. I have a country to run. I have to see about the young people. I have to get employment for them. I have to deal with the investors that will, that will push their way from St. Lucia. I have to deal with them. So I don't have time to go into, come every time and read documents and pull up things and pull up that. But if we're in the business of reading documents, for those that they did not discard, I'll bring some. Some of them that were not discarded. I'll bring some, Mr. Speaker, because we want to challenge and threaten people. You know? <clears throat> On May 41st, the government of St. Lucia entered into agreement with a developer, <clears throat> RDSL, to develop a resort district of Black Bay, St. Lucia. This agreement was amended on May 15, 2017. Following a period of negotiations, the parties have agreed to terminate these arrangements and have now entered into a settlement agreement on August 18, 2018. So you terminate what's there, and now you enter into a new one. While provisions have not been made, in the 2018-2019 estimates of expenditure for financing the expenditure, the Department of Finance proposes that, re <laughs> that revenue raised from the proceeds of the Citizens Investment Program be utilized to finance 
be utilized to finance <coughs> expenditure. It should be noted that this, this expenditure will be part of the supplementary estimates in 2018-29. Talk about the use of funds and how we're using CIP funds. We have, we have that discussion. We have that discussion. Why, why are you the CIP funds? Where is CIP money going? We have that discussion. We have that discussion. <clears throat> that it, the Department of Finance requests that the Minister of Finance approves an advance to the Department of Finance for a settlement agreement arising out of a dispute in relation to a development agreement for the development of a hotel resort in St. Lucia to range developer St. Lucia Limited in the amount of five million two hundred thousand United States dollars. <clears throat> that is the history, the history of who's stopping projects, the history of who using CIP funds. That's the history. That's the history. That's the facts. Who is stopping projects? Who fund projects and then let it continue? This government has never had to pay anybody to stop any project. This government has not had to pay anybody for stopping any project. This government has not had to pay anybody, compensation to anybody, for stopping any project. You understand, Mr. Speaker? So all these, all these, 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 these threats and these, as if they have a secret. This government has no secrets. This government has no secrets. We are open, we are open. civil servants know everything. We are no secrets. I have no secrets. I call in no investor. Let's not go there. Let's not go there now. Let's not go there now. But you know, we don't, I have no secrets. None. That's an open government. And that's why you criticized a while ago, because you say that I say I don't know certain things. I, I'm not a god. I don't, know, I don't know many things. And I won't pretend that I know. I won't pretend that I know things that I don't know and bluff my way around. And when they catch me lying, come back and say, that's not what I said. I won't do that. So, Mr. Speaker, when they try to pull you the history about our record in tourism, Mrs. Mr. Speaker, the history is clear. Now, let me give you a few facts. I, under the guidance of the Minister for, for View for South, build the most hotels in St. Lucia's history for now. If you want to go for facts. Built, operating. If you want to, let's go facts now. Let's be factual. We had, when we were in government, we had, an, in a record, the highest number of stillover visitors ever in St. Lucia for the time that you speak about. On the me, when that means of tourism. Let's do the facts. Let's do the facts. I'm the one who got the point serving port configured so it could take heavy, um, the, the larger ships of the industry. Fact. Mega ships. Fact. You want to talk about facts and who did what for, for, for tourism. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. But you come here and you mix up the history. You say things that didn't exist. You take things in one place and put it in, 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 in another place and you pretend as if you are such a tourism guru, and you did so much for tourism. And because of you, who brought Virgin Airlines? Who, who started the expansion of Virgin Airlines, of airline services to St. Lucia? Who started joint marketing? Or who continued joint marketing when we traveled with members of the private sector and members of the Ministry of, the Ministry of Tourism and members of the the Lucia Tourism Board. Who, who expanded the Ministry of Tourism? When I came to government in 1997, the, the member for Viewfort South allowed me to do a consultation with, with a fellow called Scantabury on the structure of the Ministry of Tourism. Who started that? It, it was, it, it was a, 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 a sham with the Honorable Romanus Lanzico, a fellow called Pedro Toussaint, Percival McDonald, 
a cleaner and a messenger. That's why it was. So don't come and talk about we only now we begin to accept the rhythm and you have this hypocritical thing. I'm happy. Keep your happiness. Yes, I'm happy. And I'll tell you ten investors, to invest in Telusha. These guys don't know what they're doing. These guys are corrupt. You you stopping all kinds of things, trying to trying to we we are beginning to expand. We are beginning to do some work on the, on the port. You tried your best to destabilize it, and you, several occasions, you went and you cut a ribbon that didn't exist in Viewfort, and so you're opening some big mega port in Saint Lucia. You, you spoke to several shipping companies to tell them to develop point surfing. None of it working. None of it came to came to pass. We're doing it now, and you're complaining. And you complaining, you complaining, Mr. Speaker. You you try your best to stop GPH. You you did whatever you could do because you did not want it to happen, because you did not want it, it to have after you tried it, because you didn't want to have the benefit that comes to Lucia. You came into government and you found an agreement to build an airport. You went to the IFC with a member for. Cassius North, the people begged you. They said, do not do that, Prime Minister. Please, continue, do not change that model. They begged you. There are hundreds of airports around the world who are built like that. They begged you. You, as usual, you discarded them. Because when you went to meetings, you are God. You said, shut up. That's how they say you treated them. And then, and we had to pay AFC for you. You can talk about it. And up to now, and you, you. This airport deal that, that you, 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 you speaking about, this airport deal, that's the first deal that is tied to a contractor. First loan tied to a contractor. And you instructed Slasbo to employ that, that contractor. And you paying 5% interest plus 8% fees on top of the 5% interest. So you paying 13% interest for the airport deal and you want me to continue that? You think it's a good conscience. I will pay 13%, 5% interest and 8% for every transaction. 13% and you want me to continue that. You had a project, the airport went on a as you build project. No plans, no bill of quantities. As you build, no bill of quantities for the terminal building. No bill of quantities. You build it as if it is a, a Falkage building. <clears throat> Do that now, I pay you. Do that now, I pay you. An airport, you had no bill of quantities. I am the one now who have, who have instructed that Slashburg prepare a bill of quantities and a consultant was, was selected. The Slashburg to do that. How in your good conscience you think I could continue building a terminal building and you have no bill of quantities? No final design as you go, as you go, build it, as you go, of our cage building. And you, you speak about you this pig. And, you know, and you've got away that all the time. And talk about prudent financial management. You have no bill of quantities for the largest investment project in the country. In the history of this country, you have no bill of quantities. You tie the loan to the contractor and you select the contractor by a direct award. It hurts me when I see you, this, 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 this masquerading as financial and try to denigrate us. And, this, and the sad thing is that the way he tries to denigrate us and, and call us all kind of names as if we don't know what we're doing, we are fools, tells people all over the world that these guys don't know what, I don't know what I'm doing. And, and then Lucia is in a mess, eh? predicting, predicting, and further. I also have something to say, I won't say it now. 
about the crime in St. Lucia. I'll say that at some point. And you all may have to deal with me. Because I know. I know what's happening behind the scenes. I know. I know. All that pretense about crime and who's pushing crime. I know what's happening behind the scene. What's happening behind the scene? I know. You see, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> when, <coughs> when you are in a hiss, <coughs> when you do not want, when you do not want <coughs> to accept the will of the people and you believe that you have a divine right, you understand, Mr. Speaker? That's what happens. Always threatening people. Try your best. Trying your best, Mr. Speaker. To deny great people. You understand, Mr. Speaker? So, Mr. Speaker, I thought that I would speak about these things because of the way that the member from Mikusov speaks about us and speaks about his track record and speaks about tourism and speaks about financial management of the, of the economy. All kinds of things, Mr. Speaker. So, he has already started to attack the estimates that you'll get tomorrow. He starts already. He begins to attack it. He begins. Because in his mind, he knows. Because these things are, are, are not secret. I don't, I don't call my technocrats and say this. We, we work as a team. So he may know already what's in the book. He may see that the progress of the financial, financial situation in paper, he might see what happens. He'll feel, he'll understand where, where unemployment is. He will know what are the growth projections. So he's already started to denigrate it, to discredit it. He started already, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, and we're going to be talking about a tax bill in a while. And I'm going to show the public again, and I hope he stays and listen, which government has done the most for tax reduction and tax relief in St. Lucia. I hope he stays to listen to that. Because the history is there. The history is there. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to support this, this motion, Mr. Speaker, and I want to ask members to please support the motion. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.